Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingram in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for February 16th, 2024. A uh, few pre-orders to tell you guys about this week, and then I will show you this week's new arrivals. There's a couple of really cool restocks in this as well. Some stuff that, some audiophile stuff that I haven't had in a couple of years. But let's start with the pre-orders. Pearl Jam announced their newest album, Dark Matter, that is coming out April 19th this year. Uh, we got like a triple Blue Note announcement, actually a triple triple, because the first one is a triple. It is Sonny Rollins, A Night at the Village of Vanguard. This is the complete masters, I think they're calling it. That's everything that was captured. Three LPs, all analog, cut from the original analog master tape by Kevin Gray. That is uh, March 29th, 2024. So that's theoretically, yeah, before the next two, which are the Horace Silver Quintet, Silver Serenade, and Anthony Williams' Lifetime. Both of those come out April 5th. Uh, a Craft, a Fania series. The, you know, Craft is doing a lot of the Fania title stuff. Willie Colon's La Grande Fuega. That is coming out April 12th. And this next one is kind of cool, and I'll talk to you about it for a couple minutes. That is Alice Coltrane, the Carnegie Hall Concert, 1971. So I bought Ed Michelle's record collection about four years ago, right before, maybe right when COVID started. Ed Michelle is a legendary producer for Impulse. He was responsible, I think, for most of the recording output of Alice Coltrane and kind of bringing Sun Ra to Impulse. I think that was kind of his deal. But I talked to him at, you know, for quite a few hours when I was there. I bought all of his records and I also bought his reel-to-reel -reel archive. But when I was there, he took one reel-to-reel -reel out and he goes, I want to keep this one. This is an unreleased Alice Coltrane concert from Carnegie Hall. I think he, and I'm going from memory here, I think he said something about it was a birthday, maybe something for her son, or I, I forget, the, I think maybe it was a birthday party, that type of thing. Uh, but it was recorded, he recorded, he had the master tape. He had been trying to sell it back to Universal for... Years. I, he, I think he said something like 15 years, and there was really no interest from them. But they were in talks, but nothing really materialized of it. But I know he was still working on it. He didn't have a digital file to provide me with, but I always had thought to myself, man, I would really love to hear that concert. The way Ed Michelle described it was fantastic. I think he said something along his son performed, and it was like Pharaoh Sanders, and he's, and he's going on talking about this show, and again, I'm somewhat preoccupied because I'm looking at his record collection. I'm looking at uh, all of his master tape archives. I talk about that a little bit years ago in some of the, I think there's a video typed Ed Michelle, if you look at the channel's videos. I think I talk about that. Uh, most people didn't really find it interesting, but it's kind of cool because years later, here comes the Alice Coltrane, the Carnegie Hall concert, 1971. It's kind of cool too because the way, uh, they advertise it as like recently discovered. Recently was quite some years ago, but you know, that is marketing. I, I want to do a correction from last week. That is, I talked about the Bluesville series that, uh, the acoustic sound series Bluesville stuff. I got from Universal some information and it kind of clearly specified one as being analog and it didn't really mention the other one being analog. Uh, that was really a typo on their part. I talked to Chad, as of now, Everything in this series, and I think he's pretty deep into the series. I mean, they've only announced a few, but he's got quite a few picked out that they've already worked on. And so far, everything is analog, including the title I was unsure about, which was the John Lee Hooker. So the Skip James and the John Lee Hooker, both analog. There's a couple of titles that he thought about possibly doing in the future that were never recorded analog, that only came digital. So those might be titles he talks about in the future. But as of now, and everything they've done, they're all analog. So that is kind of cool. It really looks like a cool series, very similar to the contemporary series because it's that kind of model, that $29.99 retail price. I'm guessing it's going to be that style of jacket as well. Uh, the Bluesville series is kind of cool because, you know, Kraft's doing the OJCs, right? That's the jazz. But back in the day, they had the OBC as well. The OBC was the original blues classic series. So this isn't quite that, but this is kind of going to be, you know, going through a lot of that archive, I think, and that's kind of cool. 
Uh, tomorrow or later today, I have a little whatnot. I've been doing a Thursday whatnot. Every Thursday, it lasts one hour. It's five o'clock Arizona time. It's about 30 pieces. Uh, I'm doing a consignment today whatnot, which is actually really good stuff. It's like really cherry, like Japanese pressings. I want to say there's some like Black Sabbath. It's a lot of like metal related. I'm trying to think. Click the link below. You can see exactly what I'm doing. This week and the next week are both consignment uh, auctions. I did a consignment for this gentleman a couple of months, six months to a year ago. I've done a couple of them. The guy's stuff is really cherry, but this is kind of like the last of the last of what he had. So he just gave me and said, you know, we don't have enough to do a big one, but here you want to do a couple of small ones. I said, yeah, we'll put it on the Thursday slot. So click below. You can check that out. This week's new arrivals from the OJC series, Yosef Latif's Eastern Sounds. This is a title that I think has been pushed back three times, four times. It's had quite a few pushbacks. So I'm curious to see uh, what this actually sounds like now that it is in my hands. All analog, cut from the original master tape by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio. Love the series. The OJCs are really, at this point in time, because of the quality of the recordings they're putting out, are probably my favorite series the last six months. I love the Blue Note. I love the Tone Poets. But keep in mind, this series just started. So they're like culling from like the premium portions of the Craft Archive. So yeah, we've got Yosef Latif's Eastern Sounds. Okay, I did a video talking about these latest two jackpot releases, so I won't mention them too much, talk about them too much, but I've got Mel Brown's Chicken Fat. This is an amazing record. I have added this to my top 100 imprint analog records you should own list. It is absolutely fantastic. I know it has come out multiple times. Ryan Smith did it. It is coming out in the Vinyl Me Please box. The Ryan Smith did it as a verb by request. It's coming out on the Vinyl Me Please box, and you now also can get it as a Jackpot pressing. The thing is with this particular pressing, it is all analog cut from the original master tape by Kevin Gray. And out of everything I've heard so far, including the original, this is the one to own. It is an absolute fantastic record. Also from that same series is the all analog uh, Bill Evans and Jim Hall undercurrent. I also talk about that in a video I recorded earlier this week. Uh, I got a restock on both of them. That's why I wanted to show them to you again. They sold out pretty quick the last go around. Okay. Fleetwood Mac Rumors. This is the 45 RPM version. This is the one to own. I did a shootout video of it. This is the number one. All analog cup from the master tape by Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman maybe 10, 12 years ago. It's been quite some time. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a sad day when the metalwork of this particular pressing wears out because this really is an unbelievably good, fantastic pressing. Okay, a couple of titles from Deutsche Grammophon. These are the original source titles. The original original source, the uber original source, the first pressing original sources were numbered to 3,000. I think they got a lot of blowback on that and they just went back and repressed a bunch and they're no longer uh, <laughs> numbered to 3,000. So they have unlimited series now, which is, I think some of these are those represses. Beethoven Symphony Number no. 7. Uh, these are all analog. These are done by Sidney Meyer, which is a protege of, you know, she was a protege of Kevin Gray. Uh, but these are all analog mix and cut from the original half-inch four-track tapes. They actually went back and remixed these albums. Uh, you know, if you talk to some of the more classical records professionals, apparently the original Deutsche Grammophones were eh, to begin with. And these drastically... Uh, improve them. Deutsche Grammophon, originally, they were never something to me that, I mean, they weren't bad, but I mean, I never, they don't have the same kind of, they never quite had the, they weren't the sonic spectacular of the UK DECA stuff or the Mercury Living Presence stuff, but uh, I haven't really heard many of these, but apparently they're fantastic. Uh, they've always sold out, so I've never really had any extras where I could take one home, and they weren't something that I thought I had to have to where I took one out of the system before I put it in kind of thing. So, but now they're unlimited series. So I'll probably try some of these out. I don't know if any of these are, how many of these are restocks and or the newer titles. Uh, we've got uh, Schubert's, what the hell was the name of this one? Just Forlin Quintet, I've this record here. 
who is this? Roland Quintet, Trout Quintet, La Trotta, Emil Gillis Piano. Okay. Strawinsky. London Symphony Orchestra. Some of these titles, man. I don't, ever, I don't think I've ever even seen the original of that. But yeah, it came out originally in 76. Okay, there is a Les Claypool box set. This is kind of cool because these are all the Les Claypool records that cost like hundreds of dollars, but you can get them here in this box set. You've got Frog Brigade of Whales and Woe, Fancy Band of Fungi and Foe, Live Frog Set 1 and 2. I got a few of these, but yeah, the Les Claypool, the first time ever Les Claypool. Was... So yeah, I guess there's some represses in here and some stuff that's never come out on vinyl before. I feel like I had Fancy Band of Fungi and Foe not too long ago. Man, that went for some, some bucks. Uh, wouldn't be a new arrival video without, uh, you know, we've already had the Kevin Gray uh, discussion at the top of the video. Now we're moving on to the next of the trifecta of things that just never seem to not come up every video, and that is the uh, King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard, live in Chicago, 2023. I don't know if there's a Neil Young in here, but those seem to be the three things that get talked about in almost every video. This one uh, might not be the, you know, this, this might prove that. Okay. King is in the Wizard Lizard, Chicago 2023 box set. What the hell is this? Official bootlegger. 40 tracks on eight colored LPs, hand numbered in a collector's box. They are doing 1,000 of these. This is number 262. I feel like they did one of these box sets, but who knows? That could have been another show. So this is Chicago, June 11th, 12th, and 13th. Okay. Credence Clearwater Revival. This came out a little earlier, but this is the box set, which I don't know what... I think they did it as a 2LP. I'll have to check what the difference is between the box set and the 2LP. But you got music from the motion picture, and you got the Royal Albert Hall set list, which, uh, let's see, recorded live. Is it vinyl only? It might looks like it's vinyl only. Let's see, Concert Sound Mix and Restore. This is number. Oh, well, that's a low number. That's number 71. Actually, there's a Blu-ray logo on here, so you're probably getting a Blu-ray of, I don't know if that's, I think it was like a documentary that was like quasi a concert film. I remember watching, I think it came out on Amazon originally, and it was quite good. I'm gonna have to check out my other numbers. Very seldomly do you ever get anything under 100. I always wonder what happens to the first 100 of a title. Those typically probably go out to the label, the band, that kind of thing, but that's kind of cool. The next two Blue Note Tone Po, uh, not Tone Po, Blue Note Classic Series, Joe Henderson's Mode for Joe, great record, all analog, cut from the original master tape by Kevin Gray, and another absolutely fantastic record, Lee Morgan's Search for the New Land. Two really good records uh, this month. Love the Blue Note Classic Series. I wish they just threw them in Tone Po with jackets. I think... I don't know anybody who would just rather these cheap thin jackets. Maybe they don't even have to be gatefolds, but I think everybody would be willing to pay the extra 10 bucks to have these pressed at RTI and put in, uh, you know, nice stout and tip on jackets. But they're still sonically fantastic. These are something that have been out for a while, but these were exclusive to Universal's website, so you couldn't get them for years. But they finally opened them up to everybody. So retail stores can carry them. I think these kind of went under the radar. I had, I've had these for years in my personal collection. This is the Four Tops Reach Out. This is part of the Motown and Mono series. I think there was five in the series originally, but these are all analog cut from the original master tape by Kevin Gray in a Stoughton tip bond jacket, or Stoughton style anyways. They're really fantastic. You're not gonna really hear a lot of clean sounding Motown records, especially with the originals. Uh, these, I play them all the time. They really are fantastic. We've got the Four Tops, Reach Out. Same series. Uh, Supremes, Reflections. The Fabulous Miracles. Like, good luck ever getting this record near mint. I don't think I've ever seen this record better than VG. This is an extremely difficult record to get clean. They're probably next to impossible to find at this point. But uh, great record. Yeah. 
This is just a standard OJC. This is Miles Davis's bad grooves, which is weird because they're actually repressing the OJCs that have been print in print for like the last 20 years while simultaneously putting out the newer higher price OJCs. Gustav Mahler, Fifth Symphony. This is another Deutsche Grammophon original source pressing. Johnny Cash, The Man in Black. This is from Music on Vinyl, limited to 2,500 copies on crystal clear vinyl with kind of like a linen type textured cover. Holy cow. Speaking of early numbers, this is number nine. God, I wonder, I've, I wonder what uh, other numbers I got. That's crazy, number nine. I can only think of one other time I've gotten a record under number 10. That was the High Fidelity soundtrack for Record Store Day 2015. I got number three and four. An absolute fantastic record covered by Nirvana, two tracks anyways, Plateau and Lake of Fire on the Nirvana MTV Unplugged. But that is Meat Puppets 2. Great record. It has not been in print for quite some years, but it looks like they finally put a repress of it in. Also, this is a band from Arizona, Tempe to be exact. Rat Wars. Health. Uh, on Loma Vista, I accidentally uh, ordered this on CD too. So for some reason, I've got the vinyl and I've got the CD. I don't know what happened there. Mistake, I believe, on my end. This is Tate McRae, Think a Loser, on RCA. I'm not even really sure what kind of music this is. Normally the cover you can kind of gauge, you know, what kind of music it is. If you can't read the writing, for instance, and it looks kind of dark, it's probably a doom metal record. You know what I mean? You got a guy wooing his lady. It might be a soul record. You know what I mean? I don't really know what this is. Could be soul, could be hip hop, no clue. The Goo Goo Dolls, Dizzy Up That Girl. This is a repress on, I feel like this might be on a colored vinyl or something, some anniversary edition, but maybe not. This is a record that I'm glad they finally put back in print. You don't really find this record very often clean. Oddly enough, this was a record that was worthless 15 years ago, but the average white band, AWB, this is the Half Speed Master Edition, uh, newly remastered at Half Speed from the original tapes at Air Mastering. From, uh, must be Friday Music, this is America's Greatest Hits. Yeah, Friday Music. I always know if it's a Friday Music or title, Friday Music title. How do I know? Because if it's an expensive record price-wise now, and it was a dollar record 15 years ago, almost always is it a Friday music release. I mean, it's comical at this point, but it's true. And it makes sense. People buy these records now and they pay because they're not wanting to dig through bargain bins or they just want nice clean copies and they don't want to, you know, look through 30 copies of a popular album back in the day to find a clean one. Denzel Curry, this is a, is this a, that's a new pressing of it. Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. Yeah, it's got a barcode over the barcode. So I'm guessing this is some sort of uh, color, limited edition color repress. Sonic Youth, Walls Have Ears. This is the legendary live double LP of Sonic Youth's Raging Through the UK in 1985. Is this a concert? I feel like this is a concert. I feel like we were streaming this earlier in the week. Prelude. Beato. Let's see, this is from Music on Vinyl, originally a CTI record. Number 764. Uh, limited to a thousand copies on green and yellow marbled vinyl. Kind of that linen cover as well. Should have put this closer to the front. This is a new release by Impex. It's been a while since we've gotten a new Impex release. Now, I heard we're on track for the Getz Giovarto, the One Step, maybe uh, next month, so sometime in March. But in the meantime, Joshua Heifetz, The Lark, available for the first time on all analog 180 gram LP. I have not had a chance to listen to this, but I have kept one for myself. Includes a special insert with photos and an exclusive essay. 
All right, what do we got here? This is True Romance, the original motion picture soundtrack, Quentin Tarantino by Hans Zimmer. Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls. I looked online, I feel like this was only limited to a couple hundred copies. Check on the website, it was like 200 or 500, but it was super limited. Yeah. And of course, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Alrighty then. Same thing, I feel like these were limited to a couple hundred copies. We've got Robin Hood. Prince of Thieves, the original motion picture soundtrack. What do we got here? Chelsea Wolf. She reaches out to. She reaches out to she. She reaches out to. She reaches. That's the name of the album. Had to read that back twice just to be on the safe side. So we've got that, which I'm guessing is the black vinyl version and the indie store exclusive on transparent blue vinyl. All right, we've got an anniversary edition of M&M's, the Marshall Mathers LP number two. Yeah, the 10th anniversary edition, including 11 bonus tracks. I think this is on, God, it almost feels like there's four records in there. Big, thick, fat, double gatefold. All right, what is this? Fricko. Fricko. Where we've been, where we go from here. Brittany Howard, what now? Labby Sifri. Ooh, this looks good. The singer and the song. I'm trying to see what this is. Hmm. Doesn't really tell you much, but I'm going to stream this. It looks pretty interesting. Originally came out in 1971. Belinda Carlisle. Live your life. Be free. Half Speed Master. KMFDM. Lit Go. Was this a new album? I felt like, yeah, this is a new album by KMFDM. This is, uh, what is this? The Quintet from Debut Records originally. Distributed by Fantasy. So it's an official release. This is OJC 044. Yeah, this is again, one of these OJCs. They're putting OJC records back into print while simultaneously <laughs> releasing the new higher priced OJC. Really bizarre. Manchons. Manchons 2. Manchons. Manchon's Mansion with a Z. One of the tone poets that we've been waiting for a very long time. Just got to restock Curtis Amy and Dupree Bolton's Katanga. Absolutely fantastic tone poet. I was blown away. It was a title originally on World Pacific that I wasn't familiar with. Excuse me, on Pacific Jazz. But it kind of, that was kind of the record that led me to realize musically, if it's being done as a non Blue Note title, they're killer titles. Anything that is on a tone poet that's not a Blue Note title, pick up because they're putting out fantastic stuff. Another Blue Note tone poet restock, Bobby Hutcherson's Oblique. All these, again, haven't had them in a long time. Donald Bird, Bird in Flight. Okay, I feel like I ordered enough of these this time, but I had difficulty getting them in my defense. That is the all analog cut by Kevin Gray version of T-Rex's Electric Warrior. This originally came out years ago. They put it back in a print. They forgot to raise the price because it's only 25 bucks. It's all analog, it's cut by Kevin Gray, and it comes in a big thick tip on jacket. Yes, people have been angry with me the last couple of weeks because I've not been able to keep this in stock. But I think this week, if anything is out of stock, put a restock notification in. Go to the page, notify me when available, put up your cell phone and you'll get a text message when it comes back in stock. You'll never get another message about it again, just the one time, but that'll let you know the minute it is in stock because uh, yeah, things do run out. And a restock of Cannonball at least Quintet in Chicago. This is an acoustic sound series, uh, Verve title, 
kind of the counterpart to the Tone Poet. And back in print, Mondo's Atomic Blonde soundtrack. Now, I've not heard this particular pressing, but uh, I watched the movie when it came out. It was not particularly a good movie. For me, anyways, I didn't care for it, but the soundtrack is amazing. It is a fantastic soundtrack. Uh, I mean, Blue Monday, not New Order, but produced, uh, performed by Health, uh, Peter Schilling, Major Tom, Cat People, David Bowie, 99 Loof Balloons, Nina, Father Figure, George Michael, After the Fire, Dracomazar. Cities and Dust, Susie and the Banshees. It's just, that's just disc one. It's a fantastic soundtrack. Really good. But yeah, that is it for this week's new arrival video. Check us out online at theingroove.com. Until next time.